Welcome to the channel of Coach Emrathi. Hong Kong is a strong nation in table tennis. Not as strong as China mainland, but there are many good players and coach. Today I want to present a documentary about Hong Kong national female player Li Ho Ching. She was born in 1992 and qualified for the Olympics 2016. Let's feel how hard she trains and her dream to the Olympics. Good evening. Welcome to the Pearl Report. I'm Diana Lin. Athletes dream of the Olympics, but getting there is more about talent, hard work, and good coaching. The real games are just days away. In the lead-up, producer Yan Zhou met Hong Kong Olympians heading for Brazil, as well as ones who didn't quite make it. I'm the first local who changed to full-time training at 15 and made it to the Olympics. I have a responsibility to perform better because others see you as a role model, to see if you'd be successful as an athlete. 24-year-old Li Ho Ching's table tennis career started when she was seven, rallying with her brother on the dining room table. I only liked playing table tennis, even though practicing could be quite boring. Table tennis, I think, gives me the satisfaction of winning. At 11, she joined an elite youth program organized by the Hong Kong Table Tennis Association and the Hong Kong Sports Institute. Since then, her target has been the Olympics. Ho Ching realized she couldn't get to the Olympics without devoting all her energy and time to table tennis. So, at 15, she quit school to become a full-time professional player based at the Sports Institute. I saw many of my seniors. When they turned 18, they need to prepare for the school certificate exam, or they would leave the youth program. Then they wouldn't touch a table tennis ball anymore. It seems such a waste of efforts they made before. Ho Ching was studying at the prestigious Diocesan Girls' School at the time. Her mother says deciding to leave was difficult. It was like fording a river, let her go and try. Of course, I wanted her to study first. However, an athlete can't be greedy. You can't do two things at once. As you know, mainland players, Japanese players, all start playing from the age of four or five. You've already started late. Changing to full-time at 13 or 14, you can be number one competing in Hong Kong. But going outside, you're just a small fry. I decided to let her try for three years first, but I didn't expect it to take three more years, and then another three years. After five solid years of training, Ho Ching qualified for the 2012 London Games, where she played in team matches. Getting to Rio, though, was a struggle. It wasn't a technical problem. It might be my mindset. Last year, Ho Ching was losing her Rio qualifying matches, and her world ranking fell from 19 to 36 in a matter of months. At the beginning, losing one or two matches might be due to carelessness. But when you keep losing, it makes you feel lost. You don't know how to win. In the first half of the year, I couldn't accept I was deteriorating. But later, I realized the fact was I couldn't win a match. She decided the only way to stay in was to change her attitude. Take it easy. Don't be stressed out qualifying for the Olympics. Even if you don't qualify, you won't retire. You will keep playing for Hong Kong. Why don't I pretend they're not Olympic qualifiers, but ordinary matches? In January, she advanced to the semifinals at the German Open, and that secured her place for individual matches at Rio. From hardship to despair to fresh opportunity, 
from hell back to heaven. Ho Ching tries to spend free time with her family. They like shopping together at the market and preparing a meal at home. <laughs> Ho Ching's dad makes her favorite dish corn with diced pork. Athletes see much winning and losing, so it should be relatively easier to accept the ebb and flow of playing. I think my mom will support me as always. At first she asked, how was your match? When I lost, she asked me why. Later, she gradually knew I didn't want to talk about it. Then she talked to me about other things when I came home. The only thing I want to tell her is to relax. I'm afraid she's pressuring herself too much. Your forehand strokes are quick. You need longer backhand strokes. Then you can better handle spin shots. Don't worry, you'll perform better. I often describe myself as a pioneer. I can't allow myself to fail. I remember when I was 15 why I hesitated to change to sports full-time. was because there were no successful stories to encourage me to switch to being an athlete without doubts. My goal is to get a medal. Whether I get one or not, just go with the flow. He's only 19, yet Edgar Cheung is Hong Kong's top foil fencer. Pace, attack, battle. Edgar won gold at the Asian Fencing Championships this April, Hong Kong's first ever gold at the event. And he goes to Rio as the 2016 Summer Olympics youngest athlete to qualify for the men's individual foil and he's only been a fencing professional for two years. To get qualified or not depends on only one match. It felt quite odd. I thought I was dreaming. He's tall and he has long arms. When he's fencing with an opponent, he can attack from farther away. This is his forte. And Edgar has an extra weapon. He's left-handed. Most fencers are right-handed. Our team has an advantage with a left-hander because our opponents can't adapt quickly to the different angles used by a left-handed person. Practicing has left calluses on Edgar's hand. When I was little, I thought they were ugly. As I grew up, they show I'm a fencer. I've put much effort into fencing. When I see the calluses, I know I'm not going to give up. I'll persevere even if I encounter setbacks. Edgar went to Lam Tai Fai College in Sha Tin, a fencing powerhouse in the New Territories. The school has sent 23 fencers to the Hong Kong team. PE teacher Jason Look was Edgar's favorite. Mr. Look specialized in sports. We think he's more a friend than our teacher. Basketball used to be Edgar's favorite sport. Both his parents are basketball players, but his father also introduced him to fencing when he was 10. When he entered the school, I saw him and thought, this guy is a natural in basketball. His body, speed and reflexes are very good, but I know his focus is fencing. So I wouldn't let him play to compete just for fun. He can easily get injured in a tournament. It wouldn't be good to affect his fencing. By Form 2, Edgar had joined the Hong Kong youth fencing team and started part-time training at the Sports Institute. Winning awards improved my confidence. It was an affirmation for me. I wanted to compete in Asia and even around the world, not only in teenagers' competitions. To get to that level, he quit school after Form 4 to become a full-time fencer at the Sports Institute. I discussed with my family for a long time whether to quit school. Initially, they strongly opposed it. I should focus on my studies. 
But later, I gradually realized I really wanted to quit. Academic studies can be revived later, but for sports, my physical ability, etc., would decline as I grow older. Luke supports his choice. For him, I think he only sacrifices some time for playing. What he gains is a lot more than what he loses. He enriches his life experience. As a 19-year-old youngster, he can visit so many places to widen his knowledge. Everything is familiar. It seems like I only left yesterday. I miss my classmates, teachers, and the good times we had. Very happy. Edgar is off to the Olympic Games. But at 19, he understands it might only be the start of his time as a premier fencer. I don't have much expectations about the result. I would try my best. Setting a goal for myself would bring too much pressure on me. I don't have to rush to get results. Because I'm still young, I may get to compete in the next Olympics. Everybody tells me to relax when competing. It's okay to enjoy the Olympics. Coming up after the break, how a swimmer conquered her mental block. The pool seemed like my friend, but it also was becoming my enemy. And a gymnast's fight with injury. It might train you to be stronger as a person, physically and mentally. That's more. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Pearl Report. Two of athletes' worst enemies, injury and fear of failure. Among Hong Kong's Olympians are two sportswomen who bounced back from physical or mental trauma through their own perseverance and the support of loved ones to face new challenges. Twenty-three-year-old Yvette Kong started learning to swim when she was only three. When I dive into the pool, I feel like all my worries are gone. You know, I love the flickering of water. I love being in the water. And sometimes I sing a song. From primary one, Yvette joined her school's swimming teams. Good Hope School, Darcy's and Girls School, and American International School. I felt like I had a lot of freedom in the water to move around, and you know, I imagined myself as a little fish. At age 13, she began representing Hong Kong in international meets. I'm a pretty competitive person. I love racing. It gave me a lot of satisfaction. It has been a childhood dream for me to represent Hong Kong for the Olympics. She was 15 when she tried to qualify for her first Olympic, the 2008 Beijing Games. And I narrowly missed the Beijing Olympics by like about one second in the 200 meter brushstroke. I was a bit down, but understood that there was a long way to go. The following year, she broke every Hong Kong record in women's breaststroke. That was really, really encouraging for a 16 year old. But in 2012, she failed to qualify for the London Olympics by 0.1 second. I was heartbroken. Um, I felt like I, you know, I worked very hard for nothing. I was in a black hole. Every practice felt like a mental battle because the pool was becoming my enemy. Swimming made me feel depressed. I was almost a tipping point of um, my career. In 2013, Yvette did quit swimming. I had a mental block, overcoming the fear of failure, of not making the Olympics. When I quit swimming, I realized I wanted to swim. I need someone to help me to overcome this huge mental block. At the time, she was majoring in psychology at UC Berkeley. Shrinks and swim coaches helped Yvette swim again after only three months. Instead of focusing on outcome, I learned to focus more on the process. I imagined myself being like the little girl who loved the sensation of water and found peace and joy in the pool. After graduating in 2015, Yvette applied for a master's degree at Edinburgh University 
and spent a year training with its swim team. Visualization is part of my racing technique. Sometimes I sit down in a quiet place and I close my eyes and rehearse my race, so how to get on the blocks, my dive, my breakout, my turn, my finish. And that has immensely helped me in performing. In April's Swim Cup in the Netherlands, Yvette qualified for the Rio Olympics by 0.16 seconds. When I touch the wall and look at the scoreboard, yeah, I threw my arms in the air and like smashed the water. It was a magical moment. I told myself it has been a long journey and I have grown so much from it. I eat a lot of different kinds of carbs. I also avoid um, using unhealthy cooking oil. Professional swimming is 24-7. Every little detail I put into my daily life is a lot about swimming. I have about six meals a day, and I'm highly aware of what I'm taking in. You know, I get eight hours of sleep. I make sure that my mobility and stuff are all in tune. Competitive swimming can be brutal. A little slack would leave me in the dust. For a year, Yvette trained in the gym 18 hours a week. Pre-season training is very intensive. And then the volume goes off a little bit um, after three or four months, a month prior to the target race. I'll have a decrease in volume and intensity, and I'll feel fresher after that. Now it's only 10 hours a week. So let's make sure you get to 15. Smooth in the pool, down. from 30 oh, hours no, to the point, present okay. 20 hours. Final preparations now. Just little tweaks here, little tweaks there to make sure that uh, she's in the best shape that she can be. Like I'm in my top form for Rio. My aim was to get into the semi-finals. No one from Hong Kong has done that before. Going into the Olympics is to do my best and leave no regrets. Angel Wong began doing gymnastics at age five in community centers in Australia, where her family had emigrated. I like the aesthetic of gymnastics. I like how we can be very unique with what we do. At 12, her family returned to Hong Kong, and Angel joined the national team under the Hong Kong Gymnastics Association. She trained throughout school and graduated from Hong Kong Polytechnic University with a fashion and textiles degree. At 25, Angel qualified for the 2012 London Olympics. People often tell me that, oh, you know, you're quite old for a gymnast. Angel is Hong Kong's first female Olympian gymnast. I always say that age is just a number. My attitude is just nothing is impossible. During her drills for the London Games, she devised a move on the balancing beam that's become known worldwide as the Wong. Participating at the Olympics is an achievement in itself. And I got a new element named after me, so I'm over the moon with that. It's something that, you know, I'll, I'll be proud of for the rest of my life. Then, last July... I was um, warming up. I lost my grip on bars, and I slipped off the bar, basically, at a time when you're not supposed to come off. Instantly, I felt excruciating pain, and I knew that I had damaged my knee quite severely. All the major ligaments were torn. Just a real disappointment. Like, that second when I landed, I felt like my old, all that hard work that I, I had put into, into my training that year, it had all, all gone out the window. <laughs> Rio was my biggest motivation, was my goal in life. She had two surgeries to repair her knee. The severity of the injury scared me that, you know, the fear of not just going back into gymnastics, but being a normal person, being able to walk, run, jump, and all the things that a normal, healthy person like me should be able to do. She was wheelchair-bound for two months. 
being an athlete, you're always active and, and then all of a sudden you're stuck in a wheelchair and, you know, even if I wanted to grab my drink over there, it would be a challenge. You can't help but think of, I can't go for Rio. I feel like I didn't have a direction in life. Angel started a Facebook page, Angel in a Wheelchair. It's helped me to release some of the negativity and the stress that I felt throughout the process. Some people wrote comments in support of me. One month walking on a single crutch, an angel was wheelchair free. <laughs> I'm really glad that um, I had my mom and my family to support me. They were quite positive about it and they didn't give me any pressure. They just told me to take it one step at a time because every day was a difficult day. I worried about her emotions. At the time, she was in her nadir. I was at her side. I helped with whatever she needed. Feel sad? I also think it helped her. Angel is in her 10th month of rehabilitation. A normal person will take about one year for just get back to normal. Her progress is to be much better than usual people. Probably of her mentality, especially her hardworking character. All the physical parameters came back quite quick, but if we want to put her back to sports, there's still a long way to go. We always let her decide what to do. If she gives up gymnastics, we support her. If she continues, we also support her. I can't control everything, neither can she. Just stay healthy, one step at a time. I don't want to leave the sport because of an injury. And I want to prove to myself that, you know, I can, I can get back to at least a decent level of gymnastics. <laughs> In July, Angel resumed her gymnastics training. It was quite strange, actually, because before the injury, I had been coming to the gymnasium like almost every day of the week. But all of a sudden, like, gymnastics seemed so far away. But the moment when you come back in, you feel this connection for a lot of the elements that I did, a lot of the skills that I did. But physically, I'm just not prepared. In the gym, she can only do some basic skills, such as holding her feet still, handstands, and slight bouncing. It's like learning gymnastics all over again. Injury is a bad thing, but it might train you to be stronger as a person. Hopefully, i be able to represent Hong Kong in regional or international competitions again. Well, thank you for watching our show. It will be re-aired on Monday, Tuesday and Saturday, as well as on TVB.com. Until next time, from the Pearl Report team, good night, good luck and good health.